My name is Chris Riccio. I'm the Director of Contact Center and Advanced Applications here at Inflow Communications. I have 25 plus years experience in technology and all of my experience in technology has always been related and centered around the Contact Center, at least uh, in part. So today's topic of discussion is Contact Center integrations, ac accessing the power of your CRM. Today, what I'd like to give you is, is an overview of integrations and how critical they can be in your business. Obviously, this topic can span uh, more than one hour, and I've had uh, lengthy conversations that last more than that. However, for today's purposes, we'll stick to an hour, but I'm guessing that uh, based on the content, we're going to end up with a little less than an hour, so I hope to give you some time back in your day. As usual, our webinars are moderated. Today's moderator is Luis, Luis who will be uh, taking questions. If you do have questions or comments throughout the presentation, use your widget on the right-hand side and log your questions, and I'll stop intermittently to see if we have any questions. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in, driving the experience with your data. There we go. So the goal of this presentation and discussion today is to hopefully leave you with um, the idea that your CRM data is gold. Now, when I talk about CRM, I'm talking about it in a loose term. In the context of Contact Center, most folks think of CRM as one entity. I tend to think of CRM as what's under the hood, and that's the data and the database that it exists on. This will allow us to kind of take broad strokes and discuss data and how we can use data in, the, in advancing the business and attaining the customer experience. Another uh, goal of today's presentation is to give you some options. What options do connection options do you have for accessing your data in your CRM? Additionally, when you leave today, hopefully you will understand how can you can use data to improve your customer experience as well as using the data to drive the business. Inside of the customer experience, there's things that we need to attend to. And most importantly, the business is critical in that process. Most folks think a customer experience as one-sided. I look at it as two-sided. And of course, with every business, you have business goals and initiatives that can, you can actually use data to drive as well. And lastly, I wanna leave you with some examples what some of our customers are doing with the data and how they're impacting their business and the operation. So today's agenda, we're gonna cover these key topics. First, data, the driving source force behind your CRM. The next option, CX, as everyone is now calling customer experience CX. Uh, we're gonna look at CX at the speed of data. And I've offered some simple examples I think that you'll relate to, and today's uh, examples are intended to get you to think in your environment. Every environment is different, and I think we have some relatable topics and scenarios for you. Then I'll go into a little bit of technical uh, speak, but this is making the connection uh, leveraging the option you may have. Now we lead with two different products and support a couple of contact center solutions, so I'm gonna address those specifically. Then we're gonna look at CRM data in action. I have painted a picture for you of what our customers are doing with data, and then we'll end up with a summary. That being said, let me tell you a little bit about who Inflow Communications is. Likely you know who we are because you've landed in our webinar, but for those of you who are not current customers with Inflow Communications, our sole focus is on unified communications and contact center solutions. Now we take contact center far and deep and wide. We really get into the operation, not just the software itself, but more importantly, marrying the software to the particular operation, which is a critical aspect of obtaining contact center software. And I think that we're well positioned to help you uh, take advantage of your investment in contact center software. We are a Shortel Mitel Platinum Partner, and we are also a Genesis Gold Partner. We have over 25 dedicated engineers, project managers, and support technicians. Now what I can tell you about our engineers is that the level of expertise that we have uh, comes from a couple of vantage points. Those who have been in technology for a long time and several of those who have actually worked at Shortel directly, we're happy to have them on board. And some of those are subject matter experts that operate and function on the front lines of our support teams. We have over 150, actually at last count, let me look at my phone, oh, we haven't updated. Okay, over 150,000 uh, endpoints and 600 customers supported nationwide and worldwide. Some of those clients have a worldwide footprints, um, but we address them here as nationwide since that's where their core offices are at. We do have offices and employees in California. I'm in Palm Springs, California, Idaho, Iowa, Nebraska, Oregon, Utah, and you can see the rest there. We are coast to coast and we have technicians and uh, support teams on the streets to assist you. 
Here's a quick global look at some of our key clients, some of the names you recognize, such as Zillow, Domino's, ThyssenKrupp, BP, and others here. Hopefully those are familiar to you. We're proud to have these clients through our enterprise level contact center operation. So that being said, let's get into today's topic of discussion, contact center integrations, data, the driving force of CRM. Now, I always look at the CRM as the golden opportunity or the golden application. Now, uh, as of late, or I would say late over the last five years, there's been a lot of attention on data and how we use data, and most folks think of it in terms of big data, and it seems to be the new selling buzzword. However, CRMs have been around for quite a while, and access to the applications, I always consider them the golden application because your CRM typically, or CRM-like application, is probably the most important process or application of every business. This CRMs are dedicated to many processes, including specialty markets and operations. So when we think of CRMs, we think of the classic traditional CRMs and CRMs are everywhere these days. Most everyone has heard of Salesforce, which tends to be the traditional CRM, where it has your customer information, but it also has marketing facing information as well as ticketing capabilities. We actually use Salesforce here at Inflow Communications. There's also Microsoft Dynamics. That's a pretty popular one that's out there as well. Sugar CRM is a smaller known CRM. It started out as an open source CRM, but that's another flavor. And then when we get into specialty markets, we have Zendesk. Zendesk is typically used for technologists or folks manning a support desk or development projects. And HubSpot is an interesting one for marketing and maintaining accounts. So these are just a smattering of many of the CRMs and it seems that every day CRMs are growing. Underneath that, uh, there's also Marketo, which is very similar to HubSpot, which is a marketing direct specific CRM. Now underneath the CRM is one key component. The data, obviously, but the CRM contains all your customer information, but in addition to that, it can also contain contact information, transaction history, this is important, order history, if you're using your CRM, I like it, such as an ERP system for maintaining order history and placing orders, appointment histories, if you're in the healthcare industry or some opportunity where you do uh, set appointments, and many, many more. This would have your customer information, and here I'm just giving an overview of in interaction history, transaction history, and appointment history. All of this information can be used to create a strategy for customer experience and engagement. And I also include here ticket history and request history as well, and preferences, client preferences. All of this information can be used to develop a strategy. And when you look at different strategies and different operations, um, how you develop the strategy is gonna depend on several things. Now, we will not be discussing at deep level all the strategies that are available. We'll talk about some basic scenarios. It can certainly be very complex, but this is uh, at least a good starting point. Now, underneath the CRM, it's the same process in every cap and every application. And for years, I've worked in the industry with clients and contact center, and we talk about uh, accessing data and integration with applications. That's a buzzword when you say integration. Folks get very nervous about the prospect of integration. In terms of how I interpret CRMs and applications, I'm interested in one thing, the database. The database underneath is what we will used to catalog all the information about our clients, the history, the order, et cetera. Databases underneath every CRM come in very many flavors, but they're all very similar. You have a SQL Server database, which is Microsoft-based. That one is very common these days. MySQL, which started out in the open source field. MySQL is actually under the uh, Shortel applications and many open source applications. And any new technology these days seems to have MySQL underneath. Oracle is a database that you commonly see under CRM applications. And then with the transformation of technology over the last several years, you're starting to see what is known as a NoSQL database perspective. Now, this is not a relational database in traditional form. It's more in a flat structure dealing with pages and files. MongoDB is one of the uh, more recent flavors of the past several years that have gone public with a database. And most of these are really doing JSON exchange. It's a different way to handle data, but uh, not to be too far removed from where the history has been. SQL Server, MySQL, and Oracle usually can translate things into a JSON feed. And if you're not familiar with that technology, 
that's okay. You don't need to be. Just fundamentally understand that for today's topic of discussion, underneath every CRM is a database. And this is where we're going to have the golden opportunity. Having real-time access to data within your contact center can allow you to completely transform the contact center experience for your customer and the business alike. Now, most of the times when we're talking about a customer experience, the customer journey, we're talking about how we treat the call and where we route the calls, et cetera. One thing that gets little attention paid to it is using that data also to manage the business. In other words, Let's not simply route the call based on customer preferences or information about the customer. Let's route the call based on business initiatives coupled with the customer experience. And when we get to some scenarios and examples and use cases, I'll be able to make sense of how we bridge those two worlds together. Now let's talk about how data can drive the experience. The number one item that you can deploy when you're connected to data is dynamically treating calls and routing interactions. Now, I'm saying calls and interactions interchangeably. For those folks who have a contact center solution focused solely on telephone calls, that will make sense. But nowadays, interactions has displaced calls to encompass any sorts of interaction, whether it be an email exchange, a web chat session, social media interaction within the context. One of the primary things that most folks do in the context of contact center is that when an interaction comes in, you typically will have a greeting that says, thank you for contacting our business today. How may we help you? Press one, two, or three. And that's a typical standard scenario in terms of how calls and clients will interact with your system. I propose making that dynamic instead of uh, static. With data, we can give dynamic treatment to greetings and announcements while calls are holding in queue. With data, we can customize the experience based on lots of data points. The primary ones we're going to use in our example today will be based on customer type, customer loyalty, and then you can also personalize it even further with the customer experience by greeting the client by name or attending to special dates or anniversaries, things of that nature. How you drive the experience is going to depend on your data, and there isn't anything you can't do with data. A long time ago, I got myself in a little trouble when I suggested to a group about 150 or 200 folks that if I have access to data, I can do anything. And I still maintain that within reason. Now let's talk about contact center and the customer experience at the speed of data. That's really what we're looking to accomplish here. Since data is real time and can be real time, our ability to respond in real time allows us to completely transform this experience as quickly as we can access the data. Having access to data can dramatically give us control over many aspects of the contact center kind of center experience and the customer experience. It also gives us and you dynamic control over the business in many ways. Obviously, we were talking about impacting the customer experience, enhancing and influencing the customer experience by responding to that data. Inserting practical logic is what we will use to decide how to treat a specific interaction, whether it's by client type or customer type. Nowadays, if depending on the sort of support mechanism you might have or the type of client that you might be in an organization, uh, many organizations have loyalty programs. They want to treat their new clients differently than their VIP clients. And with data, so long as we have a data pointer to this sort of customer type, you can absolutely treat clients independently. Another key point with data is that you can brand the experience and or the preference of the user. Let's talk about language for a moment. In healthcare, it's very common to understand the primary language of the individual being spoken. When you're calling an organization, oftentimes you're greeted with a menu option that says, if you'd like uh, assistance in Spanish or some other chosen language, press option two or three. I espouse that if you have access to data and language preference is part of that data, greet the client in their native language. Um, that's one way to really brand the experience for that individual. You can also use options. When you're navigating a conversation, let's say you have a client that calls in and nine times out of 10, you're tracking what options they're pressing in your IVR, option one, option two, option three, or in your case, you could say customer service, customer orders or order acquisition, those are the options that you might want to track. And then you may want to, based on the consistency of your client, 
offer that option first. Be dynamic. Look at the information and see how you can provide that to the client. Also, upcoming events, especially if you're in sales, ordering, or ticketing systems as a support mechanism. One of the key things you can do is when a call comes in, recognize the caller ID or prompt for input, and look to see if you have pending orders or upcoming appointments or tickets that have been assigned and greet the client with, we see you have an order recently placed. Are you calling about the order? And then that allows you to brand the experience for that caller. You've also given, changed the experience for the customer in that regard and allowed them to have that option up front. And then lastly, using historical information can be a tremendous way to bolster uh, your customer experience, especially if you're dealing with renewals, if you're on a, a maintenance plan support or someone that's in a subscription-based model. Renewals can factor in very easily to remind folks that they have upcoming uh, renewals if they'd like to take care of that now or discuss that in more detail. Now, I gave an option here for birthday. It's a very simple one. I use this solely for the purposes of getting you in your mindset. Most people understand birth dates and anniversaries. You can translate to something very specific to the client. Again, we talked about renewals, um, open tickets, orders, and lots of other options. So think about impacting the customer service on multiple fronts. To give you a visual of this, I'm gonna go ahead and build this all the way out since it looks like my uh, animation there was a little askew. This is a really about a customer loyalty program. I want to give you sort of a data flow process and how this might work in your environment. Now, admittedly, these are very simplistic diagrams just to get you started. You're obviously going to have much deeper business logic in your business. Um, but in this example here, let's say we have this customer calling in at this particular phone number, 555-1212. First order of business with your system is to connect to CRM and pick up what customer type are we dealing with? And then you can have your decision tree decide, well, if it's a platinum client, send it to this group who handles platinum interactions. If it's a gold client, send it to this group. And if it's a silver client, send it to this group. Now, this is a very simple application and it's a very simple process. I would uh, challenge you to replace any data point, especially customer type, to something that fits your model. And then think about your operation and how you maneuver those calls or would like to apply treatment to those calls or, or preferential treatment in some cases. Let's take a look at our next example. Customer preference handling. Now, a moment ago, I gave you an example about language preference handling. Um, I always thought it was interesting that if we know information about a client, why do we uh, commit the sin of constantly asking them if they need assistance in preferred language? So in this case here, what we're doing is uh, identifying the caller based on caller ID. We'll talk about when a customer has blocked their number in a moment. Um, I'll give you a strategic example. But back to this example here, customer calls in, we use their caller ID to look in our CRM, uh, presuming your CRM tracks this information. And if it doesn't, it may be something that you possibly could customize in your CRM, uh, get their language preference. And then instead of sending them to the same menu option, greeted in English with an option for Spanish, send them directly to a Spanish menu. Imagine your impression of uh, previously calling and getting an option uh, to choose Spanish or dynamically translating it uh, to a Spanish menu. A lot of folks are starting to deploy this. It's just another way that you show your customer they are special and different and you greet them appropriately. Whoops, let's get to the next slide there. Make my screen active, okay. Now the next one is, um, uh, we, we alluded to this a moment ago, another simple example. This is about responding to account status if that's your data point. So again, the example here is, as the call comes in, in this case, we look for an event type, an account status event type, and we'll make a decision. Based on appointments, we're gonna give an announcement based on orders or incidents. Uh, for example, we see you have an upcoming appointment on August 15th at 9 a.m. Are you calling about your appointment? If the answer is no, obviously the client will move on, but offering this up front. Think about that in the same perspective of orders. Now, orders, you can even be a little bit more dynamic. 
instead of we see you're calling about your recent order, you can also give them a quick update on the order. Your order is on hold, your order is out for shipment, your order is in uh, transit or has been delayed. So even though we're talking in the context of the sing single bullet points of appointments, orders, or incident tickets, you can expand that further. And lastly, the incident ticket, that one sounds very similar to your orders. You can also split those out. You recently have an open ticket assigned to John. Are you calling about that current support item? So that's another quick example for you. When we talk about dynamic access to data, we also are talking about the business itself. Even though customer experience or CX has always been the primary goal, and a lot of folks are really focused on giving the customer the best experience possible. It also gives you an opportunity to control the initiatives within your business that are strategic and important. Account status. I've got an example with a clients where account status is used as the preliminary routing factor, especially when it comes to delinquency rates delinquent accounts, and I'll give you an example here in a moment. Renewals as well. Renewals, if they have a lapsed in renewal or a, an impending renewal, at this point, it might be a good opportunity to send the call over to the account executive if you have that sort of business model. And or tenure, loyalty uh, programs. If, if someone has been in your uh, under your umbrella and your operation for X amount of time, it might be a good initiative to offer something uh, specific based on their tenure. Obviously, new clients uh, and long tenured clients, you can treat them quite di differently. Another business initiative that comes uh, into commonplace, um, it used to be, if you went to a McDonald's drive through they're always up selling you French fries or an apple pie. Think about your business though. In your business, your marketing initiatives and your opportunities for upsell can really expand revenue and growth and keep your customer um, connected to you closely. You can have qualifying options. Qualifying options may be something along the lines of, let's say you're uh, a banking customer. You have a certain FICO score or credit rating that would qualify you for an account you may not have. Let's say you have credit cards and a and a, an auto loan with your bank. You call the bank and they're also looking at other factors and they notice that you don't have a mortgage um, loan. They may offer a mortgage as part of their announcements uh, or when you go on hold in the queue, that could be sort of a, a, a process announcement. The data can also be used for presentation to your representative. When the call finally gets to the representative or interaction, they could have a special designation uh, of the presentable information, the CRM that says, hey, the customer qualifies for a loan while you're speaking to them, uh, talk about these options. And any sort of specials that you may be running based on certain initiatives. When it comes to marketing and loans, obviously you have the subprime and prime uh, clients that qualify. So those are things that can really define how you treat clients and bolster your business. And another consideration could be reward entry. Now I'll talk about that in a moment. It could be frequency of conversation or calls or options they choose. It could be birthdays. We've talked about that. Let's talk about reward entry. What I'm referring to here is not necessarily a reward or a benefit like winning the lottery or an extra piece of cake. What I'm talking about here is if you're navigating through a conversation, meaning your client has called you and um, the, they're greeted with, thank you for calling Inflow Communications. Please press one to speak to sales. Please, please press two or three. One of the items that um, is often met with resistance when I'm working with clients is, we don't wanna bother our customer to, customer to enter their account information. We just want the call to go directly to the agent, which is fantastic. However, when it comes to how do you navigate that environment? We're gonna talk about training the customer in a very limited example here in a moment. But if a customer is prompted to enter their account information, what can you do to reward them for entering that information? Uh, here's a classic example. I work with clients who want to have a very hands-on warm experience with their customers, as everyone should. No one likes to wait in a queue or go through automation endlessly. I am not a proponent of endless automation, but where it makes sense. And let's say you're a banking institution and you want to start having clients enter their member ID. You could do something like this. Thank you for calling XYZ Bank. For expedited service, please enter your account number. Now that doesn't require the customer has to, 
But if they do enter that information and it's validated, then you give them a reward by expediting the service. Now, in real terms, you may not prioritize those calls just based on the entry, but it's a soft entry point for training the customer to have the information available because there will be a reward of expedited service on that end. So that's what I mean in that example there. Hopefully that gives you a little bit more thought in terms of how you might engage your customer to give you more information. So let's talk about the example I just gave in terms of reward entry. Also, I am not a proponent of everything being static. Thank you for calling, enter your account number. Thank you for calling, enter your account number. That gets to be mundane and clients get used to mundane and they'll skip right through it and then your effective opportunity is lost. Now what you could do is this. You'll notice here in this data flow process, this looks very similar to our previous data flow. However, in this case, we're, do, we're gonna address two issues. One, unknown phone numbers and training the customer. This is a, a, a visual of the example I just gave, but we're also addressing both sides. Let's say we have a customer call in and their phone number is blocked. Clients do this all the time. Only in those cases would you uh, then greet them with a request input. And you can see my megaphone there is kind of right between the CRM. So then your decision tree goes, look for a phone number. If the phone number is blocked or we can't read it, then only then would you prompt the customer with a prompt that may go something like this. We don't recognize the number you're calling from. Please enter XYZ information or for expedited service, please enter your information. From that entry point, we could then gain access through the CRM connection to get the account status. And then obviously our decision tree can be several items on the right. Now I purposely mix this up because I don't want us to walk away from the scenario and the feeling that it can only be one way. With data, you could have many different options and they are as diverse as every organization. You can have uh, delinquent accounts go directly to collections, a good accounts go to a general menu. If you have a, an account that is not located, it can go to a different processing uh, branch or even just separate processing agents. Or if it's a specific account type that you recognize, give that account prioritized handling. Now you have to put a lot of thought and process into the, the opposite effect. When you're trying to prioritize other calls, what's happening to the other uh, calls that may not meet that criteria. Now thankfully in most systems, there is a gateway and a configuration option that allows the calls in the back, I will say, to never get lost at the bottom. But this is just an example addressing both Unknown callers, blocked information, information we can't identify, and training the customer in a gentle way. So defining a strategy can be as diverse as the business. And every business is gonna have their own touch points that are important factors for maneuvering the customer experience as well as attaining the business. Now, data is one aspect of it, and we're only talking about it in the sense of a CRM. However, it, it's, it's common nowadays for most businesses to have analysts, business analysts, data analysts on board that extract information from multiple applications, including the CRM, and dump them into what's known as a BI application, business intelligence application. Now this is the, the, the new frontier where everyone is diving in deep and for a lot of contact centers that I uh, engage with, this is still a costly and uh, sort of a scary uh, option for them. But inflow communications are, we are well positioned to help you maneuver through that. But BI applications allow you to extend the strategy just beyond the CRM. You may wanna look at it in terms of revenue potential. If the customer calling in has a revenue potential of $3 million, you might treat them very differently than a customer who has a revenue potential of $100,000. Combining multiple data points can be very easy, but oftentimes can be very complex. Now, when you have an extended BI application, um, you can get very complex, and this is where your business and data analysts will come in, but uh, nine times out of 10, those folks really come back with one or two results, which you could leverage in the contact center. Now, what I would say is, if this is your first time looking at data and you wanna get into data and how to manipulate and use data for the customer experience, start simple and build as you go. Now, building a strategy, uh, like I said, can be complex. I recommend um, reevaluating the process that you initially build on a regular basis. It can be quarterly, it can be uh, biannually or annually. It really just depends on what your strategic initiatives within your business. Start simple. Simple examples are true, false. Is the customer delinquent? Yes or no. Is this a VIP customer? Um, yes or no. And then 
based on customer type, then treat it that way, or account status. Um, basically, make it really simple. Secondarily, when you're talking about routing, think about prioritizing. Um, use a priority, a flat priority. And again, we're keeping it simple. Use location uh, parameters, uh, customer locations. And I have a great example for you in a moment about how clients are using location to define the experience. Use language, um, very simple data points that do, don't require a lot of complex analysis. Pending historical information, such as pending orders we've talked about, pending renewals or new customers, treat them differently than uh, customers who have been on for a while, and certainly treat your customers that have been on for a while a little differently as well. These are some simple, um, no fuss ways to kind of look at data, presuming you have access to data. So let's talk about a little bit more technical. And Luis, I'm going to stop here and to see if are there any questions at this point? Not at the moment. Okay, and for those of you still hanging on to the conversation today, let's talk about, uh, go into a little bit of technical speak here. It's not too wide, but for you uh, technical folks on the call, I'm going to address this in making the connection in terms of how do I connect to the CRM. Now, there are various ways to connect to the CRM. Now, I will say this up front. Connecting to your CRM is a decision that needs to be made with IT in mind, and IT has security initiatives that are paramount. So in the event that you're not connecting directly to a CRM, nine times out of 10, somebody such as an analyst, a business analyst, or a data analyst is downloading that data into another uh, application that you might connect to. Here's the real holy grail answer. I would never presume connecting to your raw data that is the lifeblood and heart and soul of your business. However, I do uh, recognize that most people offload that data into what are known as staging tables or other applications more appropriate where you have just view capability, meaning you can't change the data, you can simply view it. So that's uh, rule number one. Most applications today do provide an out-of-the-box functionality options for connecting to CRMs, and they do it in various ways. I'm going to address the short tail environment in a moment and Pure Cloud by Genesis as an, another example. Gaining access uh, typically is done through ODBC connection options. ODBC is a fancy way of saying, let's just translate it in a simple plug and play option known as a driver. Now, for ODBC, normally you need a local machine with an ODBC driver. However, there are many applications today, and you probably are living and breathing on a web-based application. Web app Web-based applications need to connect in another way, usually through a web services. However, there are web service enabled ODBC drivers. We've used them here at Inflow to great success and I'm gonna show you where you will find those and hopefully you can go to the website and take a look and see what options they offer. You might find what you're looking for there. Another way to connect to database is through open API options typically through a web services call. Now, thankfully, we have gotten out of the need for custom development for connecting to web applications and web services. Applications today have gotten robust and smart that even in a context of having to uh, connect via a web service, that web services are anymore a plug and play option. I'm gonna explain and at least show you visually by way of presentation the option that exists for at least one of the context and solutions we provide. And lastly, plug-in options. More and more providers are uh, developing plug-in options, such as if you're a Salesforce shop, you want to live and breathe in Salesforce, Salesforce has a plug-in adapter for various applications. That means the phone call connectivity or call control mechanism lives and breathes inside the application. The advantage of having an application such as that is as a call comes in, Salesforce can connect to it and then present very strategic information to the user. You also see that from Microsoft Dynamics. And if you're getting a little more um, aggressive and advanced, many applications are providing what are known as embeddable frameworks. Embeddable frameworks allow you to craft a custom solution to your CRM. So depending on your solution, you may have one or more of these options. Now, I'd like to address uh, Shortel, Mitel, ECC. For those of you that don't know that ECC acronym, it is Enterprise Contact Center. And 
this is one of the, the golden nuggets of Shortel's offering, is the ability to connect directly to a CRM or a database on the backside. Um, the ODBC connection here, I'm just showing you inside director, where you would connect to the application. Now it's a little bit more that needs to be applied here, but once you're connected, and you've installed the driver on the server, you have open-ended access to that data. And then your next option will be to use what is known as GCCS. You can see it on the left here. I've called it out, GCCS IVR. That's graphical call controlled scripting so that you can connect to the database. And another option for ODBC connectivity for Shortel, Mitel, ECC is with this website, cdata.com. They provide ODBC connectors for web applications. Now these are fantastic because you install them locally on your server. It does the communication to the application on the backside and it caches the application or CRM data locally on the server. So should the, you lose connectivity with the application, it can still grab it locally. But you have options for deployment. I do recommend you go to www.cdata.com we get no benefit of recommending you here. This is an application we use here at Implement Communications to connect to Salesforce. And you'll notice here, this is just an example of some of the common CRMs that you can uh, use an ODBC, web-based ODBC, ODBC driver to connect to CRM. And you probably will see a few that uh, I called out or you've recognized. This is only a handful of them. Go to their website, then go to the uh, CRM and ERP options, and you'll see quite a few more. Now, once you're connected in enterprise context or on Shortel, this is the IVR process. Now, the IVR process is the data flow builder. It's the graphical call control scripts. You'll basically set your connector. In the flow process, you're going to make your connection, request the data from the CRM, close the connection, and then you take action. Now, the tool is built with some really good logic switching. So you can literally grab any information from CRM to make a decision. You can also do a compounded decision. If the customer is a VIP customer, then check this. If the customer is delinquent, then do this. If the customer has renewal. So you can cascade that into a quite a, a quite a deep strategy, but this is what it looks like in Shortel. Now another application that we position for clients that are looking for cloud-based options is Pure Cloud by Genesis. With Pure Cloud, integration is as easy as any iPhone or Android. So folks that are on a call today, to make the relationship simple and easy, if you have an Android or iPhone, what do you do when you want a new app? You go to the App Store, download it, enter your credentials, and you're off and running. This is almost how Pure Cloud by Genesis offers it. Now here on the right, you're seeing that in the Pure Cloud administrator, uh, ad administrator options, under integrations, you'll have the integrations bullet point there. The integrations bullet point will then point you to many canned applications. Now this is only a list of some of them. When you're in the Pure Cloud application, all of these integrations already exist, and you can see under each one it has an install and details button. It takes about 30 seconds to install that. Then you enter your credentials and you're typically off and running. Now my favorite one to use is this one right here. It's the web services plugin. And you can see it here on the bottom row about the middle. So in the Pure Cloud uh, uh, interface, the web services data connector lets you connect to any third party, app, uh, third party application. Now I've connected to a SQL server hosted on Amazon in less than 30 minutes. I've connected to Salesforce, ServiceNow, Zendesk, and any application that a customer has that is web-based. Now once I'm connected, you can go in and adjust the schema to fit your needs. Now I know this is a little bit more technical for your non-technical folks. This is just how you uh, set up your form to say what information am I requesting here. You can see I'm just looking for the phone number on the right. Change the request and schema to meet your input. And then once you've created the, the connector, you can actually test it in skin without actually having to deploy it. So here you can see an example. I've asked for the phone number at the above, which though is 503. I've run my action and down below it's returned my output. Now I only showed you two pieces of data here, account number and account start date. 
Uh, actually, this returns much more data than that, but this is just showing you that the CRM is really geared towards making it simple and easy. Now, in Pure Cloud, you have a similar IVR flow process. What I'm pointing to here, this is just a visual view, and I know this is tough to read, but on the right-hand side, take a look at the category. It's the, it's the web services data action. Here's what I would say. Once you've added an, inter, uh, an integration to Pure Cloud, it immediately becomes available as a drop-down option in IVR. So it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you, and now you have to do is just build your flow around it. With ECC, there's a little bit more work, but PureCloud has done a good job of making it straightforward and simple. So let's jump into some customer success use cases. We'll talk about some of their benefits, and hopefully these examples will leave you with um, maybe going back to your operations and, and thinking about what might be possible within your operations. So let's get to example number one. With this customer, they wanted to create a boutique customer experience. As they grew and they realized that one of the things that made them successful was having a real one-on-one -on -one boutique experience, meaning that, the, that they were fear of losing that personalized touch as they grow and grew. And so what they did in this regard is their strategic plan was to create smaller support teams. They may have 35 or 40 technicians, but they want to create smaller teams within that um, collection of technicians, routing customers to the same technicians whenever possible. Now, the way they mapped this out was even though they had one national team, they mapped them out into West Coast, East Coast, and Central. Now, I happen to know this customer. They've also broken out their individual teams here, West Coast, East Coast, and Central, into smaller segments, such as blue team, green team, red team. The advantage to doing that is that they're able to really maneuver the client to a very spe specific user. Additionally, in their CRM, they uh, customized it um, because they use Salesforce, that's an easy option. They basically assigned every customer a, a team, and then if the customer has a ticket, a support ticket open, they've assigned the technician and or senior tech or team lead. Now, here's what it looks like. To maintain their boutique experience despite their growth, and they've had tremendous growth, call comes in, it hits the CRM. In the CRM, they pull up the, the technical team assignment, only open tickets, and the customer type. Then they make the decision of which um, region or team to route it to, West Coast, Central, East Coast. And keep in mind, what I'm not depicting here is they even take it a little further and send it to the same two or three um, teams within a team, such as red, blue, or green teams. The advantage for the customer is this. They kept and maintained the personalized experience, so the boutique experience, despite their growth. Because they're routing those calls to teams and then also a team within a team, they're creating very tight technical relationships. So for example, customers in Phoenix call the support number, they end up at the West Coast team, and they end up with John and Marianne always. If John and Marianne are not available, then they go to the larger West Coast team. But the whole point is they're building familiarity. If they're always reaching the same technicians, the customer is, um, their anxieties are assuaged because they don't, uh, they know that John and Marianne know them well. Uh, they built a tight relationship and it really does enhance the experience. And overall, it gives them support consistency. Things that people don't think about for the long game, but because of this experience, clients come back year after year after year because of this one piece. This can transform the perception your customer has. Now, another client use case was in reducing debt portfolios. The primary goal of this customer was to um, reduce collections debt portfolios. Now, their goal was to evaluate every customer interaction, account status for delinquency. It's the number, it's the very first action anytime a client hits their system. And what they look for is they break their delinquency rates into three categories. Early delinquency, 15-day delinquency, which still sort of is early, but not too late, but then 30 days. And of course, that translation depends on the business. And based on the delinquency rates, they provide customer options. So with early delinquency, it may just be a friendly reminder that, hey, we, do you know that we offer auto payment? To, to, to set up your auto payments, do X. If it's 15 days, maybe it's payment planning. Or if it's 30 days or more, then it's restructuring debt. Based on the scenario here, this is what happens. 
when the call comes in, first thing the system does is look through the CRM. Now, I do know this client isn't looking solely at the CRM. They're actually looking at uh, deeper analytics, uh, but they're using a process called a stored procedure to return one value. And based on what they find uh, as the return value, they may make off, uh, you can see on the right here, they may make an offer for options for early delinquencies, such as set up a payment now, um, ask for payment arrangements, 30 days would be handled differently and 90 days. The, what they really wanted was no client that was delinquent, just pass to skip collections. And in the cases where it's a soft relationship um, hit on the collection, um, they're making sure that they also handle the customer service branch. For collections, they don't mind handling the collection because that helps uh, incentivize the collection team, but then they also help the customer service aspect of it. The initiative here isn't to take the call into collections and then transfer it back out, but to do the end-to-end -end ha handling of the call while attaining uh, and attending to the delinquency. The benefit to the customer, uh, debt assistance, obviously, the, uh, debt management and guidance for the business, for the customer, and payment planning. You can see all of this equates to reducing the debt portfolio, elegantly handling the customer on the front side, and uh, it's worked out really well for them, and we deployed this for them about three years ago, and they are still using it today to great success. They're very happy with that. Our next one is more about a broader business. Perhaps you're in the business of supporting clients across multiple businesses, which is common, especially when you're talking about uh, work benefits. It's very common to support uh, several organizations within your organization. And in this case, the customer is bound by their SLAs for that organization. Let's say you support IBM, uh, AT&T, and um, Let's just leave it those two examples there. And you have a service level agreement with those individuals. When they call you for support or however you're handling their business, it's important that you attain those service level agreements. So in the CRM, they have a data flag for account type, account age, and account SLA, which is critical. They will use this information strategically to uh, look at several factors, customer type, loyalty, and then current service level. Now, in this case, the number one initiative was service level. They want to dynamically move calls. If they're not the, uh, meeting their objectives for service levels through the course of the month, they will manipulate the call and move them by uh, either prioritizing the call dynamically so that we can uh, get back to a good winning uh, end game, uh, assign a, an SLA skill, so they actually have skills assigned to SLAs, or assign account rep. In other words, if they're seriously out of SLA, they'll get it to an account rep who can then talk to the customer directly, give them more of a personalized experience from a higher up on the chain, if you will. But how they maneuver this um, actually lets them control the business on multiple levels. So here's the example here. When the call comes in, they look for the required SLA, the account type, account age. Based on that data, They'll make decisions about how to set the priority based on SLA or skills assignment or um, loyalty or announce loyalty and use these factors one or all simultaneously to make a, a decision. The net result is SLA attainment. That's the number one goal. Oftentimes when these businesses are structuring a relationship with another business for support services, SLA is often met uh, with um, a, a detrimental uh, shortfall. So if they're not meeting the expectation, there could be a financial penalty to the organization. They're also getting agent assignment. So in some cases, for the SLA requires not only service level attainment, but you agree to have these three technicians handle my calls only. And that's a common practice. When you're outsourcing certain data or certain processes for the organization, clients demand what they demand. This is one way to uh, handle that. And you can also offer special greetings. Um, What's common in, in those sorts of organizations is if you have 20 customers, you likely have 20 separate menus and IVR processes. With data, you can create one IVR flow process and dynamically change things based on the customer. And when I say dynamically change everything, change the greeting they're greeted with, thank you for calling IBM, blah, 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 blah. Thank you for calling um, healthcare services, et cetera. So you can really be dynamic about that. So when I think of greetings here, think about it uh, from top to bottom, how that can be attained. So those are some use case examples. Let's get into our summary of what we covered today, and I'll give you a few minutes back in your day. And I'm just gonna build this completely out. Your CRM holds the key to improving customer experience. The data available, not only in CRM, but across organization, is valuable in more ways than what we 
we've talked about here. What I'm addressing here in this scenario is how you can use it to impact the customer experience as well as attaining to the business. Once connected to data, build out your strategies. Come up with a strategy both for customer experience and customer journey, what you do with the client, when and how, and make it dynamic. There's nothing more impressive than uh, maneuvering a client to a call as the current state of the account. I'm always impressed when I contact uh, United Airlines. They greet me as a, a million uh, dial call. Uh, million mile qualifying member, et cetera. And uh, if I make changes to my status, they always greet me with a change to my status, et cetera. But once you've connected the data, build your strategies around customer experience, build your strategies around business needs adherence. That's one that's often lost. Folks are so busy focusing on the customer experience, they're afraid of losing clients, but it's okay to create rules and logic that help augment your business. And quite frankly, sometimes there's clients that maybe you don't want because they're a different sort of uh, breed of client, and clients are, are, are being more selective these days. And then lastly, think out of the box. Think outside the box. Challenge yourself. Be creative. Think about your business. And the best way I always think about how to approach that is think about myself calling the organization. How would I feel? What would I expect? And what would, what would change my perceptions about an organization? With that being said, if you have any questions and answers uh, or any questions and comments, uh, I would love to take them now. Uh, Luis, do we have any pending comments? Um, uh, no, Chris. Not at the moment. Not at all. Uh -huh. Great. Well, thank you everyone for paying attention today. I realize an hour, buying an hour of time in the perspective of context center is a lot to ask for. The fact that you register for this webinar and have stayed with us through the hour is very much appreciated and not taken lightly. With that, we'll give you at least eight minutes back in your day and we wish you a great week. And hopefully in my travels, I will meet you soon or in the coming future. I always have an open door policy. If you're looking to ha ask me questions privately or have a one-on-one -on -one discussion, you can reach out to contact at Inflow Communications dot com and they will funnel the information or the request to me. That being said, thanks for attending today.